Hi, I'm Simon from Gokkamp, and I will be presenting our paper, Curve Trees, Practical and Transparent Zoo Knowledge Accumulators, which is joint work with Matteo Campanelli and Matthias Hal Andersen. So a zoo knowledge accumulator is a commitment to a public set, uh, which you can update in public, and then you can show uh, statements about elements of the set in zoo knowledge. Uh, a motivation for looking at these uh, accumulators is uh, to instantiate uh, anonymous payments. Uh, you might want to show that you own some coin in a set, which you could do by uh, having a coin be a commitment to some value and a nullifier, where this nullifier is something you reveal when you spend the coin, such that you cannot spend it twice. And then when you spend a set of coins, uh, you get to add a set of coins of equal value to the set, where of course you show in your knowledge that the balances of the uh, two sets of coins are equal. Um, and then you could use uh, re-randomized public keys as the nullifiers and uh, use those to sign the transactions to authorize them. A common way to uh, instantiate an accumulator is uh, by building a Merkle tree, which if you're not familiar is uh, you hash uh, all of the elements of a set in a tree structure. So by if you know the root of this Merkle tree and you're given the path, including the siblings uh, down to some leaf, then they are convinced that the, this is part of the, uh, the set. And if you want to do this as part of a zero knowledge proof uh, in a circuit, then it's um, crucial that you choose the right hash function because uh, this can quickly dominate the computation time of your proof otherwise. Um, and uh, as an example, if you use a uh, Merkle tree with uh, 2 to the 32 uh, leaves and uh, SHA-256 as your hash function, then you end up with about 800,000 constraints uh, in uh, a rank one constraint system. While if you use something like Peterson hash function, then you can get down to 45,000 constraints. While in our construction, uh, uh, using a curve tree, you get uh, down to less than 5,000 constraints. And the trick here is really not to, to compute the hash function inside the circuit. So at a high level, if you want to do Merkle trees with Peterson hashing, then when you hash the field elements initially, uh, they're native to the proof system. Um, but the digest you get out of like computing the hash uh, would be a group element, like in, uh, say, a curve point if you are doing it over elliptic curves. Um, so this is not native to the proof system anymore, and you would need to do something like bit decomposition on this uh, group element to hash it uh, at the next level of the tree. So the way we avoid computing the hashes inside the circuit is to exploit the structure of commit and proof. So we replace Peterson hashing with Peterson commitments, which just means we add um, a, a generator for re-randomizing the Peterson hashing hashes, if you will, so they become Peterson commitments. Uh, and now the prover will give, when they want to show the inclusion of an element, uh, they will give all of the commitments on the path to that leaf to the verifier. Now this obviously reveals the path to the, that leaf, so it's not zero knowledge, but uh, we will figure that out later. Uh, but the digest is still not native to the input of the hash function. So we need to deal with that. So the solution is to say, what if this digest is native to another hash function? And yeah, spoiler alert, we will use uh, cycles of elliptic curves. And if you haven't seen it before, basically at least a two cycle of elliptic curves is if you have uh, one curve where the uh, field of definition, uh, if that is uh, if uh, P, P0, uh, then the order of the other curve must be P0 and vice versa. So in other words, this, words the scalar field of one is the base field of the other. Uh, and now this means that uh, the uh, points on one curve are native inputs to the hash function defined over the other curve. Uh, at least like uh, if you look at, at, at the points as two coordinates, then they can just be hashed into the other curve. Yeah. 
Uh, and so a curved tree with uh, RTL would need uh, two, uh, two uh, L generators to work. And yeah, we can't do better, spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, so we remove the Y coordinates. And the standard trick in this case is to say that we just have the X coordinate and then a sign. Uh, if you want to compress a, a, an elliptic curve point. Um, and then you, it would make sense to say that uh, we only allow uh, points with a positive sign in the tree. And so you don't need to store the sign even. Uh, but then you run into this issue that this line point is, is usually something like um, uh, y is in the upper half uh, of this uh, prime or it's a least significant bit of y or something. And computing this takes uh, all of the security parameter field operations, which it's, it's, it's not terrible, but it uh, would be a significant cost in our uh, construction. So instead, we take a universal hash function which maps a field element into a bit. Uh, and this is based on uh, computing like a, a regular universal hash function and then checking if uh, the result is a quadratic residue in uh, that uh, field. Uh, and then it's easy to prove uh, whenever something actually is a quadratic residue simply by giving the witness uh, meaning the square root. Uh, and then you can show this thing in one constraint. Now we left this open problem of adding uh, zero knowledge uh, because the path uh, given to the uh, verifier was simply going to leak what the leak was. Uh, and our solution is to re-randomize all of those commitments on the path. And then from the root onwards, we show this relation that um, the next commitment on the path, like the root is not re-randomized, but the rest of the path is. So from uh, the root onwards, we show that the next commitment on the path is a re-randomization of a child of the current commitment. Um, so maybe to illustrate that a bit better, uh, if you have this uh, C3 and trust that this is a part of the, um, the, the path, for instance, for simplicity, that is simply the root, uh, then we can open uh, one of its expert and it's using uh, select over all of the children and then decompress using this uh, uh, square root trick from before. And then we have uh, a point which we can then uh, sum with uh, the generator used for the randomization uh, multiplied by some secret scalar. Uh, and then that should give us uh, the next point on the uh, uh, on the path. And that is then the full uh, construction. So um, to sum up the costs of all, of all of these things, we have one thing that's variable and that's uh, selecting the x coordinate. And that depends on just linearly on the number of, uh, like on the branching factor of the tree. And then we have decompressing uh, the permissible point. That's just a single constraint. And then point addition is around uh, 10 constraints or so. Uh, and finally, the fixed based uh, scalar multiplication in order to do the randomization uh, of this secret point that you have owned, uh, that is going to take around 900 constraints. Uh, and this is due to, um, uh, so the way we compute it is to split uh, the secret scalar into three bit windows uh, of eight possible values each, and then have uh, lookup tables with these eight possible values and then summing over all of these. So this is by far the most uh, costly thing of the uh, relation. Uh, and for that reason, we have pretty shallow trees. So finally, we've implemented and benchmarked our select and randomized uh, primitive use in bulletproofs uh, is allowed up to play with the trade-off between the depth and the branching factor. And we found pretty good numbers for set sizes of up to 2 to 40. Uh, and if we compare a, uh, an accumulator based on our selected randomized uh, primitive, primitive with one based on Merkle trees using Poseidon as it has, as it has function, also using bulletproofs, 
uh, we see that ours performs quite a bit better. Um, and if we instead instantiate a simple uh, uh, anonymous payment system from selecting the randomize, uh, we see that we perform almost as good on uh, transaction size and uh, proving time as uh, Zcash Chapman, which is based on a trusted setup, but we cannot really compete on the verification time uh, unless we amortize ours using batch verification. Yeah. Um, and with that, I just want to say thank you, and I'm happy to take questions on Slack. Um,